hope you're ready for some Wheel of Time Season 1 speculation. In this video, I want to cover everything we know and a lot of little hints and clues we have that can help us speculate about how much book material is likely to be covered in the first season of the Wheel of Time on Prime. This is going to include spoilers for the first two books, The Eye of the World and The Great Hunt, as well as the prequel New Spring, because I think these are the books that might be covered entirely or in part in the first season. If you haven't read that much of the series, I highly recommend you come back to this video after you have, and instead check out my spoiler-free content. I'm going to lay out all the relevant information we have, including casting, that has been confirmed by Amazon or someone else official with the show, like Rafe Judkins, the showrunner. Then I'm going to go through some unofficial reporting and leaks, with the caveat that we can't be totally sure of some of that information. Finally, I'm going to speculate on how much of The Eye of the World, New Spring, and The Great Hunt I think will be covered based on this information, and how will these books be adapted to the new medium, what might be changed or added. Basically, I think there are two major possible scenarios, and I'm going to outline each one and then make the case for which one I think is more likely based on the available information that we have. I will say that we're likely to get a lot more information over the next year or so, and that might change these speculations. But as we're currently on a filming hiatus for at least the next several months, now seems a good time to put together everything that we have so far. Let's dive in. So let's talk through the two big possibilities as I see them. Scenario one, I'm going to call the Great Hunt scenario, and this has been a very popular speculation, especially after we got the episode titles for episodes five and six. In this possibility, the Eye of the World is concluded in the first four episodes, and we are into Great Hunt material for the rest of season one. Since we don't have confirmation of episode seven or eight, or their titles, it is harder to speculate on how much of the Great Hunt would be included in this scenario, but possibly all of it. Scenario two, I'm going to call the New Spring scenario. And in this case, I think we see the main events of the Eye of the World will be stretched out over the majority of season one, with the climax of the Eye and Tarwin's Gap taking place near the end, probably around episode seven. In this scenario, I think we would see a lot more new spring flashbacks interspersed throughout the season, along with expansion of other storylines, but we would not get very far into the events of the Great Hunt, if at all. Someone might ask this, so let me cover it now. Do I think it is possible to do all of this? The entirety of the Eye of the World, significant new spring flashbacks, and at least a sizable chunk of The Great Hunt in the likely eight one-hour episodes of season one. No, I don't think it's possible that all of that is going to be done, and I'll explain why. My fellow YouTuber Nablus did an excellent video a little while back laying out how it was possible to cover all of book one in four one-hour episodes without making significant cuts and allowing for a few extra scenes with Loghain. Very convincing that this could be done, but what was not included in that breakdown was any flashbacks to New Spring or other expanded material in those first four episodes. So if we're talking about significant New Spring flashbacks, and they don't start until episode five, so they'd be all in the back half of the season, how would we fit in that and all of the Great Hunt in episodes five through eight? It leaves us the problem then of where would you stop in the middle of the Great Hunt to have a satisfying conclusion. You want the first season to have a full arc, a strong climax, and a nice hook at the end, ideally. So I think it's one or the other. I think you'd get lots to all of the Great Hunt or a lot of New Spring, but not both. If you're still not sure, I think this is going to make more sense as we get into all the specifics. So let's start. First, let's lay out everything we know that might help us make an educated guess about which of these scenarios is more likely. I am going to start with some fairly obvious confirmed information that might not give us too much to go on with answering this question, but it's good to have it all laid out, and especially if you haven't been following all the show news thus far. We have cast confirmations for characters that we know are major in the first couple of books. 
Rosamund Pike as Maureen Damadred, and Daniel Henney as Lan Mandragoran. Madeline Madden as Egwene Elvere, Yosha Stradowski as Randall Thor, Marcus Rutherford as Perrin Ibarra, Zoe Robbins as Nynaeve Almira, and Barney Harris as Matt Cawthon. Alexander Willaum as Tom Marilyn, and Hamid Anamashon as Loyal. We also have Johan Myers as Padan Fane, who is a minor character in Book 1, and we know from Rafe Judkins that he will appear in the first episode. These castings are all to be expected, and don't tell us too much about how the books are likely to be adapted for the first season. The only potentially useful bit here is that Rosamund Pike is clearly the biggest star, and that along with press releases that describe Warren as the central character, do indicate that Moraine will get a bigger focus in season one than she does in book one. Now let's talk about some confirmed cast information that might give us a bit more to go on. First up, we have Alvaro Morte as Loghain Ablar. Loghain becomes an important character later in the books, but he is mostly off screen in the first two. Alvaro is a pretty big star in Spain, plus we have Rafe Judkins confirming that Loghain's role in the show will be expanded, so I think we can safely expect to see a lot more of Loghain's early story than we do in the books. We also have the casting of Michael Mickelhatton as Tam Althor, and there's nothing too surprising about this except that he is also a fairly well-known actor, and if we just went by what is in the books, Tam would likely only appear in the first episode of season one, and then not again for perhaps a couple of seasons. Next, we have a number of Aes Sedai and Warder characters, none of whom appear in book one, with one possible exception that I will get to later. We have Priyanka Bose as Alana, Kate Fleetwood as Leandrin, and Jennifer Chion Garcia as Liana, who are all introduced in book two, along with Alana's two warders, played by Taylor Napier and Emmanuel Imani. Claire Perkins is playing Karine Nagashi, who only appears briefly in the prequel New Spring, and is killed, apparently by the Black Aja, before that book is over. Peter Franzen, a notable Finnish star, is playing her warder, in the book, she has two warders, who are only briefly mentioned and are not seen to do anything noteworthy. I'll also throw in here that Jennifer Chion Garcia shared a photograph of herself with a copy of New Spring, and her character Liana also appears in that book. Jumping for a moment from casting to episode titles, we have confirmed titles for episodes 1 through 6 in order, Leave Taking, Shadows Waiting, a Place of Safety, The Dragon Reborn, Blood Calls Blood, and The Flame of Tar Valen. A lot more on those titles once I get to speculation. Now time for some information that is at least partially unconfirmed. We have several known cast members who don't have confirmed roles yet, including Maria Doyle Kennedy and Daryl McCormack, who were at the table read for episodes five and six. There was a report in Variety that claimed Daryl McCormack will appear in a total of three episodes in the season. We also have Lolita Chakrabarti and Nana Agye Ampadu, who were seen at the table read for episodes one and two. Ampadu is reportedly playing a character named Danya, but we don't have a character in the books with this name, so either it's a new character or the name put out there might be a misdirect, similar to the fake names given to characters in audition scripts. Christopher Schwerif and Juliet Howland are reportedly playing Matt's parents, Abel and Natty Cawthon, and the twins Lilibet and Latiana Gutanaseva as Matt's sisters Eldrin and Bodhi. Then we have Helena Westerman, who is potentially a family member of Parents, with the character's reported name of Layla Ibarra. This is another name which does not appear in the books, and there's lots of speculation here since she doesn't exactly look like Marcus Rutherford, but I'll get to that later too. When it comes to Johan Myers, who has been cast as Pot on Fane, there was also a report in Deadline that he had been booked for only one episode with the potential to return. Knowing where his storyline goes, it would be all but a certainty he would return at some point, but it would be very interesting if he only appeared in one episode in the first season. The last potential bits of casting we have so far are Abdul Salis as Eamon Valda, 
an important white cloak character who doesn't appear in the first couple of books, but he could easily take the part of one or more other white cloak characters who we do see early on. We can expect a brief appearance from Master Hightower, who is the man who runs the ferry in Tar and Ferry, and this is based on a leak from when Brandon Sanderson visited the set, and based on this, the character would appear in episode two, and we also have a report that Pierce Quigley has been cast in this role. Finally, Stuart Graham was reported to have been cast, but in an unknown role, and Pasha Bokhari has also said he was filming The Wheel of Time, again in an unknown role. The casting agency has put out several calls for extras, and I'll lay out pretty much what we know from that, and then later on I'll talk in a little bit more detail about the ones that are a little bit more interesting or revealing. So we have Asians without hair, which sounds an awful lot like Shinarans to me, females for a nude bath scene, one-year-old twins, preferably girls, a seven to nine-year-old boy of any ethnicity, dark-skinned babies, which would be for a main character, a puppeteer, and a barber. We also have a number of photos, either confirmed or likely from Wheel of Time sets. And one of the ones that's most interesting to me is this, which appears to be a tinker with a wagon. And then this structure, which I feel pretty confident is part of a way gate, where the gate itself would be added digitally. Now let's go into any statements we have from Rafe Judkins or any cast members that might be useful. Rafe recently did a Q&A on Instagram, so let's look at that and pull out some relevant bits. First, he says, I genuinely think we are cutting less than people think. He makes it clear in several answers he isn't cutting characters like Min, for example, or combining them with other characters. The one example he gives for cutting is when Rand and Matt visit so many inns during the group's separation. I think his wording makes it clear. We'll still see them visit at least one inn, but I don't think the story fundamentally changes. We're just not going to see every location described in the books because it would be a practical impossibility. He essentially confirms Min will be in season one, though we don't know the actress yet. Rafe also tells us Jeffrey Bornhold, for example, has been cast, and we don't know his casting either though Stuart Graham sure looks like a good candidate. He doesn't go as far with Elaine, but that seems a safe bet also. So when Priyanka Bose was asked a similar question about an actress who would be playing Elaine, and she responded, I wish I knew her yet, there's no reason to assume this means Elaine hasn't been cast. In terms of book interactions, there would be no obvious way to bring Elaine and Alana together until Elaine is in the White Tower, and that happens midway through book two. If we haven't gotten that far, then it makes sense that Elaine and Alana haven't interacted yet, and whoever has been cast for Elaine just hasn't met Priyanka at this point. Essentially, the lack of a casting announcement doesn't indicate that anything has been cut, and I think that's pretty much true across the board. Another Rafe AMA that goes back to September 2018 included a number of relevant tidbits. He was asked for five scenes he was excited to adapt from the first two books, and two of the ones he mentioned are pretty clearly going to be in the first episode, Tam and Rand in the Westwood and Winter Night. The third is Tarwin's Gap. He mentions Toma and Head from the second book, which isn't really a single scene, and then Egwene being leashed. In the same AMA, he also says there are aspects of the Eye of the World he plans to use in different seasons, and Padan Fane's true self will be disguised more in the show. A lot of what Rafe wants to add are things that occur off screen in the books, and he says that generally flashbacks are a great way to learn more about a character, and finally, he has plans for New Spring. Now, let's talk about which evidence supports each of the two scenarios I laid out at the beginning. For the Great Hunt scenario, the casting of some of the characters who first appear in this book, so far we have Alana, Leandrin, and Liana specifically, could bolster that argument. A counter-argument, though, would be that since Loghain is going to have an expanded storyline, it makes sense that we would have some Aes Sedai involved there, and why not choose Aes Sedai, who are going to be important later anyway? Alana and Leandrin could easily be involved here, although it wouldn't really make sense for Liana to be. When Rafe is asked about the scenes he's excited to adapt from the first two books, 
he did mention two parts from the latter part of the great hunt and it could be an indication he was already thinking that far this was from well before he would have started writing season two but this is pretty weak since he was specifically asked for scenes from the first two books and the tome on head example isn't all that specific some of the extras castings do appear telling for me especially the dark-skinned baby of a main character we don't know exactly who this is referring to, but the obvious candidates would be Nynaeve, Egwene, or Perrin. There are examples in the books where Nynaeve and Egwene have visions of possible realities where they have babies, and none of these occur in book one. So for Nynaeve, the obvious example is her testing for accepted in The Great Hunt. And then for Egwene, Rand has visions of possible realities where he marries Egwene and they had a baby and these also occur in book two. Now for Perrin, there's no clear examples that come to mind unless they are changing things for him significantly. People have pointed to the casting of Layla Ibarra as a clue that they might give Perrin a wife at the beginning. Since we know from Rafe Judkins that the character of Fayil is not going to be cut from the show, this would necessitate Layla dying at some point, probably very early on. Maybe they have a child who dies too. Personally, I think this is way off the mark. This would be a massive change from the books, and I can't really see a great reason for it. Nothing Rafe has said has indicated to me we're going to be seeing this kind of change. On the other hand, Brandon Sanderson has commented about some significant changes in the scripts that he's read, so this could be one of them. But if Layla is going to be a relative of parents, there are other possibilities. She could be an adopted sister. It might be interesting to have Parent be adopted by the blacksmith's family rather than living with his biological family. She could be a cousin or a girlfriend and the reported last name is wrong. Or maybe the entire name is a misdirect and Helena Westerman is playing a different role altogether. Either way, I don't think this baby is going to be Parent's. If I had to guess, this is going to be a baby for Egwene and Rand, and that we'll see it in a dream or a vision at some point. Since this does happen when Rand sees visions of his alternative lives when he uses the portal stone in The Great Hunt, this is evidence for The Great Hunt scenario. But it's also possible that Rand or Egwene could have a dream about this at any point, so it's not definitive. The females for a nude bath scene are almost certainly going to be for Shinar, and that occurs at the beginning of The Great Hunt. But I also would not rule out getting to at least the very beginning of The Great Hunt, even in the New Spring scenario. Finally, I want to comment on the puppeteer, because people have pointed to a scene in The Great Hunt where there are puppets in Kyrian. And this is certainly possible, but this one just seems very general to me. There's lots of reasons why they might need a puppeteer, so I can't draw too many conclusions from that one. By far the strongest evidence we have for the Great Hunt scenario is the episode titles seeming to line up with Great Hunt material once we get to episode 5. Blood Calls Blood is the title for Chapter 7 and is a clear reference to the dark prophecy written on the dungeon wall in Faldara. But one caution I have had with the chapter titles from the beginning is that we know for sure they are using them out of sequence. The clearest example is A Place of Safety, which is an early chapter title from The Eye of the World and occurs before the group even leaves Emmons Field. Yet in the show, it is being used for Episode 3 long after they have left. Even episodes 5 and 6 are out of order if we match them with The Great Hunt. The Flame of Tarvalin is Chapter 1, and Blood Calls Blood is Chapter 7. So, if they're using the chapter titles out of order, we shouldn't be too sure they are lining up with corresponding book material at all. Maybe they just like these titles thematically. There are so many chapter titles in this series, nowhere near all of them will ever be used. Nablus's video did convince me that this scenario is possible, so I don't want to rule it out, but we should consider the evidence for the New Spring scenario as well. The biggest evidence here is the casting of Claire Perkins and Peter Franzen, specifically casting an Aes Sedai who only appears in New Spring and is dead by the end of it is very telling. 
If that's not what happens to Claire Perkins' character, why choose that name when there are so many Aes Sedai in the series to choose from? Kareen is a cameo in the book. She appears in one not very involved scene and then is referenced afterwards as Moraine and Swan figure out that she is one of the Aes Sedai tasked with tracking down the infant dragon reborn. And then she dies suddenly off screen, killed by black Aja hunters. Why cast this role at all, unless we are going to see a bit more of her than we do in the book? Especially, why cast a very well-known actor as her warder when he has even less to do on the page in New Spring? Also, the fact that Jennifer Chion Garcia was carrying around New Spring is pretty definitive to me that we are going to see some scenes of her from the New Spring era when she was a newly raised blue sister and friends with Moraine and Swan. Presumably, if we are seeing Liana doing New Spring stuff, we would see scenes with Moraine and Swan as well. There's actually a great deal you could do with a secondary plot line in flashback from this time period strategically interspersed throughout the season. There's no reason why we couldn't have scenes of Moraine and Lan from New Spring to flesh out their characters. And we wouldn't be limited to what we see on screen in New Spring either, since presumably we will see more of Kareen and her warder. Since we are going to see a surprising Aiel in the first season of the show, here's an opportunity for that as well, since New Spring takes place at the end of the Aiel War. Maybe we will see part of the last battle from that war. We could have a young Ruark or Emis making a cameo for all we know. Tam Thor fought in the Aiel War. Maybe he makes an appearance as well. And though I'm not sure we will see the flashback of him finding a baby on Dragon Mount quite this soon, you never know. So while that seems like extrapolating a lot from two casting decisions and a photograph, I would find it very hard to believe that we only get a couple brief new spring flashbacks in the whole season, and that they would happen to involve Kareen, her warder, and Liana, who are all minor characters or mentions in that book. If we're seeing them from that era, I think we're going to be seeing a lot more. And if so, I think it will be spread throughout the season, not limited to a couple of episodes or the back half of the season. No matter what, we need time in the back half of the season for the main timeline climax. Also supporting this scenario is the report of Pot on Fane only appearing in one episode. I was thinking this would be hard to pull off in either scenario, but it would be impossible in the Great Hunt scenario. It is possible this report is wrong, but this statement from Rafe made me think it was maybe more likely. When he talks about Pot on Fane being disguised better in the show and the way he answered, it sounded pretty definitive that he had a plan for that. So maybe we won't see Pot on Fane in Faldara at all and won't know until later who stole the horn and dagger. There are other ways we can find out his history than with a long scene of exposition as it is in the books. Maybe these aspects of Pot on Fane are part of what Rafe meant when he mentioned some Eye of the World material that would be used in later seasons. I find his statements on the use of off-screen material and flashbacks are also pretty supportive of this scenario, and this is a great way to make Moraine more of a focus character in season one. So it's pretty clear at this point that I think the New Spring scenario is more likely based on all of the evidence that we have so far. But how would they make that work when it has been demonstrated that the Eye of the World material could fit tightly into four episodes and probably comfortably into five? The remaining, let's say, three hours worth of material wouldn't all come from the New Spring era, but some of it would. Some of it would be Loghain's story in the present timeline. And then I would argue for some of it could be Tam's story, either in present, if we see him traveling to Tarvalin to look for Rand, or in flashback. Spending more time with Tam makes use of a great actor who is going to be important later. And it gives an opportunity to also see a little bit more of some of the True Rivers characters who have been cast so far. And I don't think all of these things would be possible if they're instead trying to cover all of book one and all of book two in the first season. But I would not be surprised if we still get to see a little bit of the Great Hunt. A great cliffhanger ending could be the Horn of Valir being stolen from Faldara. Last bit of speculation I want to include here. To me, an expanded focus on Kareen and her warder in the New Spring scenario 
still doesn't explain the presence of Peter Franzen in this role. So my speculation is that he has actually been cast as Elias. In New Spring, Elias makes a cameo as a warder to a different Aes Sedai, Rena, but she is never a significant character and neither are Kareen's warders. So there's no reason why Elias couldn't have been Kareen's warder instead of Rena, and it would give him more to do in season one, plus an opportunity to return later. It also gives more of a reason to give those characters a focus in the flashbacks. Totally speculative, and I think the New Spring scenario is likely even if this part doesn't turn out to be true. I'd love to hear your thoughts on all of this. Is there anything I've overlooked so far? All of this has led me to the conclusion that it's going to be even more important to catch up on New Spring than it is to catch up on The Great Hunt. So with that in mind, I'm going to announce that for fans of my reread series, the next reread videos you will see from me will actually be of New Spring. I am scripting them right now and plan to cover the book in four episodes. That being said, my current reality of staying home with two very young kids for as long as the coronavirus crisis lasts means I have very little reliable time for filming, which is why you see less of me in this video and why you can't expect to see videos from me as quickly in the near future. But please hang in there with me. I am planning to still do The Great Hunt after New Spring for those of you who are looking forward to that. Never fear. Lastly, I have to give a shout out to a fantastic new YouTube channel, Unraveling the Pattern. Lauren is the one who did my incredible new intro, which gives you just the smallest taste of the work he does with animation on his Wheel of Time videos. Be sure to check him out if you haven't. And look for more of his beautiful animation in my reread videos when they return. I'll see you next time.